Good evening, brothers and sisters. Blessed Wednesday to all of you. Tonight, we are here to exalt His name. We are here to sing of His love. And we are here to receive showers of blessing. Amen. What an honor it is um, for us to be in the house of God. Let us um, offer a prayer before we begin the service. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for allowing us this fellowship with you. Thank you for embracing us in good and bad times, never letting us go. Father, we pray this evening you'll fill us with your presence. And may this entire service be acceptable in your eyes. We commit the service from beginning to the end into your loving hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray with full thanksgiving. Amen. May I invite all of us to rise on our feet. Let's sing our first song. Let's lift our voices and praise our God tonight. Building the temple of praise. 
you. You are righteous, you are holy, and you are all powerful. Father, we want to lift up our praises and our prayers to you this evening. Let us really pray for the final stages of our church construction as well as the seminar and dedication service. Let's lift all these events into his care. And let's also continue to pray for each other's faith to grow in maturity. And let us remember also to pray for Evangelist Jasmine's ministry work to overflow with grace. And last of all, let's pray for our own individual prayers. After this last song, we will enter into a time of prayer. Let us sing of His love.
Father in heaven, worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts as members of one body. You were called to peace and be thankful. Through Jesus Christ, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to our God and the Father. Father, we confess our sins. Grant us repentance and turn to you, for you are faithful and just. And forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness that time of refreshing may come from you. Father, let the message of Christ dwell among Zion Church richly as we teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through some hymns and songs from the Spirit. Just as a body through one has many parts, from one body, so it is with Christ. We also pray for brother and sister going through sickness, difficulties, pain and tears. May your good hands be upon us. Heal us, comfort us, and deliver us from the evil. Father, at this time, continue to be with Evangelist Jasmine as she faithfully continue to minister in your word. Protect her from harms, bless her with good health and your spirit upon her. Father, in this service, all praise are due to you. In Jesus' most precious and holy name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Hallelujah. We are blessed to uh, continue with the uh, uh, studies uh, shared by Evangelist Jasmine. I'd like to read the main passage for today. Isaiah 62, verse 2. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 2. I'll read it for you. The nations will see your righteousness and all kings your glory. And you will be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord will designate. This is the word of God. Uh, Evangelist Jasmine will come up and share the message with the title, The Blessing of a New Name. Let us say hallelujah, raise our right hands, say hallelujah to greet her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 네, 여러분 오늘 또 만남을 가지니까 예, 저희 마음이 너무 너무 오늘 기쁩니다. I am very joyous in my heart to be able to meet with you once again today. 오늘은 제목에다 제목에서 보다시피 이름에 대해서 얘기를 하고자 합니다. And just as we can see in the title, I like to talk about names today. 모든 사람은 자기 존재를 나타내는 이름이 있죠. Everybody has a name that represents the his or her own identity. 혹시 여기 이름이 없는 분 있으십니까? Is there anybody who does not have a name here? 네. 이름 없는 사람 없어요. There's no one that does not have a name, right? 우리는 그 사람을 기억한다 할때그 이름으로 기억을 하죠. So when we say we remember somebody, we remember by their name, right? 그리고 어떤 사람이 유명해진다는 것은 곧그 사람의 이름이 이렇게 알려지는 거죠. And when somebody becomes popular or well known, it's that person's name that becomes well known, right? Remembered. 우리는 대부분이 자기 이름이 누구에게인가 기억되기를 바랍니다. So we want our names to be remembered by someone and others. 그것도 아주 좋은 이미지로 기억되기를 바랍니다. And we want our names to be remembered in, with a good image. 그다음은 첫 번째로 우리가 성경에서 과연 이름이란 무엇인가 하는 것을 살펴보도록 하겠습니다. So first point, let us think about what name is and signifies in the Bible. 이름이라는 것은 한 사람의 전체 일생을 가장 짧게 압축한 것과 같아요. Name is like a compressed summary of the person's entire life. 그래서 이 이름에는 첫 번째로 인격이 나타나는 거죠. So first name speaks of a person's character. 우리가 어떤 사람의 이름을 딱 기억하면 아, 그 사람은 좀 나쁜 사람이야. 그러기도 하고요. So when we think about somebody's name or a name, we think about that person and the, sometimes we say oh that person is a bad person. 어떤 사람은 이름만 듣기만 해도 마음이 너무나 좋아지면서 아, 그 사람 참 좋은 사람이야라고 생각을 하죠. And there are people whose names we hear and it just by hearing the name we feel uh, good about that person and we say ah that's a good person. 그래서 성경엔 특별히 그 이름은 그 사람의 인격을 나타낼 때가 많이 있어요. So in the Bible there are many times when the names represent and describe the person's traits and attributes. 이 야곱이 그렇죠. Jacob is one example. 창세기 25장 26절을 보시면 In Genesis chapter 25 verse 26. 태어날 때 
벌써 이 경쟁심이 굉장히 많았어요. Even from his birth he had this sense of competition. 그래서 자기가 먼저 태어나려고 쌍둥이 형의 막판 여기서 싸우다가 막판에 발을 탁 잡고서는 나옵니다. And so he wanted to come out first from the womb at his birth and at the end he grabs the heel of his brother when he's coming out. 그래서 자기 형보다 자기가 더 잘하려고 하는 것을 볼 수가 있어요. And we can see that he had this desire to be better than his brother. 그러다 보니까 속이게 되고 그 사람을 좀 이렇게 피해 입히는 경우가 있는 거죠. And at times because of that sense of competition he sometimes deceives and sometimes harms the others. 그래서 나중에 이 창세기 27장 36절을 보면 이런 말을 합니다. And later in Genesis chapter 27 verse 36 he says this. 야곱이 형을 계속 속여서 좋은 것을 차지하게 되니까요. Jacob continues to deceive his brother and takes uh, what, uh, what is his. 에서가 그 야곱의 이름이 그 그대로 하지 않습니까? 야곱의 이름이 합당하지 않습니까? 이렇게 얘기를 합니다. Esau says, "Is he not rightly named Jacob, for he has supplanted me these two times?" 네, 그리고 이 성경에서는 이름이라고 할 때는 그 부모의 기대와 소망이 담겨 있죠. And also in the Bible when we talk about names, names contain the parents' hope and expectations of the child. 왜냐면 이름은 자기가 짓는 게 아니라 태어날 때 보통 부모가 지어 주잖아요. Because usually our names are not given by ourselves, it's our parents that give us the names. 그래서 부모가 원하는 거 부모의 소망을 담아서 이 아이의 이름을 짓는 거죠. And so the parents put their hope and their their desire and their expectations upon the child and name the child accordingly. 그래서 그것이 그 소원하는 것이 이게 굉장히 세상적이냐 아니면 좀 영적이냐에 따라서 부모의 신앙이 거기에 나타나기도 합니다. So depending on the on what the parents expectations are uh, whether it's spiritual or material or worldly we can see even from the names uh, the faith of the parents. 이 노아의 경우는 창세기 5장 29절에 나와 있죠. For example, Noah in the case of Noah, we can see in Genesis chapter 5 verse 29. 거기 보시면 이 저주 받은 땅을 이 아들 노아가 아니하고 안식을 줬으면 좋겠다 하는 그러한 소망을 담아서 어, 이렇게 노아라고 지은 거예요. This verse reflects the, par- uh, the expectation of Noah's parents that they would uh, they desire for this son to bring rest to the toiling uh, laboring curse of mankind. 네, 노아는 안식 위로라고 하는 뜻이 있는 거죠. And that's why Noah's name means rest or comfort. 그리고 또이 성경에서 세 번째로 이름은 하나님의 뜻과 계시를 나타내기도 합니다. And thirdly, in the Bible, names re- reveal God's will and revelation. 그래서 하나님이 그 시대를 향한 하나님의 계획 또 하나님이 하시고자 하는 그러한 모든 경륜을 그 어떤 이름을 통해서도 나타내시는 거죠. And so God reveals his uh, it, names contain God's redemptive administration for the time of that person. 여호수아란 이름이 그렇죠. For example, Joshua, the name Joshua is like that. 구원자란 뜻이에요. It means savior. 이것은 이스라엘 백성을 인도해서 이제 가나안 땅을 정복하고 거기를 차지하는 사명을 담아서 이런 이름이 있는 겁니다. It speaks of the mission and task given to this person Joshua to save God's people during that time. 무드셀라는 어떨까요? What about Methuselah? 그가 죽을 때 끝이 온다는 뜻이죠. The end will come at his death. 그 말처럼 그 이름처럼 그대로 무드셀라가 죽었을 때 홍수 심판이라고 하는 끝이 왔습니다. Just like the meaning of his name at the end at the death of Methuselah the judgment of the flood came the end of this world came. 자, 크게 두 번째로는 이새 이름을 주시는 역사를 보겠습니다. And second big point, second main point, let us think about the times when God gave a new name. 하나님이 때때로 이름을 바꿔 주시는 경우가 있어요. There are times when God uh, changed people's names. 여기서도 혹시 개명하는 것이 법적으로 허용이 됐나요? Is it allowed in Singapore to change your names legally? 어, 이 한국에서도 어, 뭔가 크게 이 사업을 시작할 때 이름을 바꾸기도 해요. There are times when uh, people change their names, especially when they ch- uh, start a big business or new business. 
뭔가 이제 정치로 나간다고 할 때도 이미지를 바꾸기 위해서 이름을 바꾸기도 하죠. And sometimes people change their names when they uh, decide to go on into politics or big uh, public become a big public figure. 이 이름을 바꾼다고 하는 것은 이 어떤 인생의 전환점이 있는 거예요. So uh, changing a name uh, is a sign of a big turning point in somebody's life. 그런데 하나님께서 이름을 바꿔 주시는 경우는 뭘까요? But uh, what what about the cases where God changes your name? 마찬가지로 그 사람에게 어떤 성품의 변화가 있거나 특별한 그런 사건이 있을 때에 이름을 바꿔 주셨어요. Likewise it is uh, it becomes changing of the name becomes an important turning point in life where the person's character changes or a big event take, takes place. 때로는 새로운 사명을 부여해 주실 때도 이름을 바꾸셨어요. Sometimes God changed a, a, a person's name when he is giving that person a, a, a big task or new task. 그래서 새로운 이름으로 바꾼다는 것은 새로운 시작을 뜻합니다. So changing to a new name signifies a new beginning. 어, 아브라함의 경우를 볼까요? Let us think about the case of Abraham. 자, 원래는 아브라함이 아브람이에요. Abraham's original name was Abram. 거기서 아브라함으로 바뀌었죠? And from Abram it became Abraham, Abraham. 창세기 17장 5절에 말씀하고 있습니다. And this is written in Genesis chapter 17 verse 5. 자, 이제후로는 내 이름을 아브라함이라 하지 아니하고 아브라함이라 하라. 이는 내가 너로 열국의 아비가 되게 함이니라. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. Abraham is 고귀한 아비란 뜻이었어요. Now Abraham meant honorable father. 그런데 아브라함은 열국의 아비예요. But Abraham uh, means father of a multitude of nations. 이제 한 가정의 아비로 머무르지 말고 모든 구원받을 자들의 아비가 되라. And it signified that God wanted him not to be just the father of one family, but become the the spiritual father for all nations. 믿음의 조상으로 하나님이 만드신 거였어요. So God had made him into the father of faith. 이것은 이 특별한 계기로 아브라함이 믿음을 인정받은 후에 이런 일이 일어난 거예요. And this took place only after Abraham was. Uh, Tested and acknowledged for his faith by God. 창세기 15장 6절에 있죠. And Genesis chapter 15 verse 6. 자 아브라함이 여호와를 믿으니 그를 의로 여기셨다 그랬거든요. It says then he believed in the Lord and he reckoned it to him as righteousness. 정말 믿음이 엄청 좋은 게 아니었어요. It wasn't that Abraham's faith was so great. 하나님이 그냥 의롭다 쳐준 거예요. It was God reckoning. Uh, reckoning that his faith is righteous. 하나님께서는 이렇게 이름을 새롭게 주심으로써 사명을 맡겨 주신다는 것을 꼭 기억하시기 바랍니다. So let us remember that by giving a new name God is giving us a new task and mission. 제가 듣기로 6월에는 이제 새로운 임직식이 있죠. I heard that there will be an uh, uh, ordination service in June. 그래서 여섯 분이 이렇게 안수 집사님으로 임직을 받는다고 들었어요. Six people I heard will be installed as ordained deacons. 이렇게 안수 집사라고 하는 명칭 이름을 새로 주시는 겁니다. And this is a new name you are being given, uh, the new name ordained deacon. 여러분의 사명이 주어지는 거예요. You are given along with the new name a new task and new mission. 이건 하나님이 주시는 거예요. And this is being given by God himself. 어 나는 믿음이 부족한데 어쩌지? You might say, "Oh, I don't have a great enough good enough faith. What do, what do I do?" 하나님이 만드실 거니까 걱정 마세요. Don't worry because God will start making you. 우리 한국 속담에는 그 직분이 사람을 만든다라는 얘기가 있어요. And there's a Korean saying, "The position will form the person." 아마 여러분이 그 임직을 받게 되면 그그 그 호칭 때문에라도 아마 더 열심히 하시게 될 거예요. And I believe that once you are installed, uh, at least because of your new title, you will work even harder. 
아마 청소도 더안 하다가 하게 될 것이고. And I believe that those who have not been uh, clean, helping with the cleaning of the church will start helping with the cleaning of the church. 예배만 드리던 것도 공부까지도 하게 될 것이고. And those who only came to worship service will stay back for Bible studies too. 주중에는 안 왔지만 이제 수요일도 오게 될 것이고. People who did not come to Wednesday services will start to come to Wednesday services too. 이제 세미나에도 사람들을 막 전도해서 데려올 것이고. And they will bring more people to seminars and and studies. 여러분이 하는 게 아니라 그 타이틀이 그 이름이 여러분을 하게 만들 겁니다. It's not you who will be doing it. It will be your new name that is given to you that will allow you to do that. 여러분 새 이름의 축복과 또 귀한 사명을 선물로 받으실 줄로 믿습니다. And I believe that you will receive the blessing of the new name and the new task. 네. 그리고 또 이름이 바뀐 경우가 있는데 바로 베드로예요. And there is another case where the name was changed and that was with Peter. 원래 베드로는 시몬이라 불렸어요. Peter's original name was Simon. 이 시몬을 개바라고도 하죠. And Simon is also known as Kephas. 요한복음 1장 42절에 있어요. And it's written in John chapter 1 verse 42. 아, 예수님께서 이 시몬 베드로를 뽑으시고 이제 장차 개바라 하리라 그러죠. And Jesus chose Simon to be his disciple and he said you shall be called Kephas. 근데 이 개바는 번역하면 베드로래요. And Kephas is translated Peter. 개바는 아람어예요. And Kephas is uh, Aramaic. 혈통에 근거한 이름이죠. And it is uh, a name that follows the blood lineage. 그런데 70인역으로 번역이 되면서 혈통을 초월한 이름이 됐어요. But as it was being translated into Greek uh, uh, through the Septuagint, that name uh, became a name that transcends the blood lineage. 이거는 베드로가 예수님에 대한 신앙 고백을 한 후에 일어난 일입니다. And this also happened when Peter, uh, after Peter made a confession of faith before Jesus. 마태복음 16장 16절이죠. And that is in Matthew 16:16. 16. 주는 그리스도시요 살아계신 하나님의 아들입니다라고 고백합니다. And he confessed, "You are, uh, you are the Christ, the Son of the Living God." 야, 이 베드로가 이렇게 영적으로 탁월하고 이렇게 믿음이 좋을까 생각할 수 있겠죠. And you might think, oh, was Peter so good in, uh, so amazing in faith, and he was, was he so understanding in the spiritual things? 그런데 요 바로 다음 절 17절에는 uh, 이 시몬 보고 네가 복이 있다 이를 알게 한 일은 혈통이 아니고 하나님 아버지께서 하신 거다라고 말씀합니다. But verse 17, Jesus says, uh, it's not you who said it. It's not the blood or the the flesh that uh, that said it, but it's the Father in heaven that allowed you to say this. 모든 헌신의 역사는 하나님께서 여러분을 통해서 역사하신다는 것을 믿으시기 바랍니다. And so please believe that all the uh, dedicated works are being done by God through you. 자 마지막 큰세 번째인데요. And lastly, uh, the third main point. 야곱 우리가 이제 새 이름 받은 것 중에서 야곱의 경우를 좀더 자세히 살펴보도록 하겠습니다. So let us think a little bit more specifically about one case uh, where the new name was given and that is with Jacob's new name. 야곱의 이름이 어떻게 바뀌었죠? How did Jacob's name change? 그렇지 야곱의 이름은 이스라엘이라는 이름으로 바뀌었어요. Jacob received a new name Israel. 창세기 32장 28절에 나와 있죠. Genesis chapter 32 verse 28 tells us this. 네 이름을 다시는 야곱이라 부를 것이 아니요 이스라엘이라 부를 것이니 그랬어요. He said your name shall no longer be Jacob but Israel. 이 사건은 바로 야복강에서 일어난 일입니다. And this took place at River Jabbok. 도대체 여기서 어떠한 일이 일어났던 거예요? What 건가요? happened at this place? 이 창세기 32장은 야곱의 일생의 전환점이라고 볼 수가 있어요. Genesis chapter 32 can be seen as the turning point in Jacob's life. 그동안 야곱은 20년 동안이나 외삼촌 라반의 집에서 너무나 큰 고생을 했습니다. Up to that point, uh, Jacob had spent 20 years in toil and much suffering at his uncle Laban's house. 그래서 다행히도 이제 그 종살이를 끝내고 고향으로 돌아가게 되었어요. And finally he uh, finished his 20 years of something like a slavery at his house and he was on his way back to his father's home. 
father's house. 아, 그동안 이제 환란과 고생의 시간을 가졌으니 이제부터는 좀 편해지겠구나라고 생각하겠죠. All this time I suffered, so I uh, he was probably thinking, now I'm looking, I'm, I'm going to be liberated. I'll enjoy my freedom. 그런데 이게 웬일인지 너무나 충격적인 소식을 듣게 됩니다. But then he hears a very shocking news unexpectedly. 그거는 20년 전에 형 엘서를 속였었거든요. And it's because he had deceived his brother Esau 20 years prior to this. 그런데 그일 때문에 과거에 형 엘서를 속여서 장자의 축복을 뺏은 일이 있었는데요. Because he deceived his brother Esau and took his birthright 20 years before this. 이제는 시간이 너무나 오래 지나서 다 까먹은 줄 알았죠. 다 해결되는 줄 알았죠. So much time has had passed, so he thought it would be okay, and he maybe his brother had forgotten about it. 그런데 형 에서가 이 야곱을 죽이려고 군사 400명을 데리러 데리고서는 죽이러 오고 있다는 거예요. And but he hears news that his brother Esau is bringing out 400 soldiers to kill him. 너무나 큰 두려움과 위기를 느꼈습니다. And so he felt such great uh, danger and risk for his life. 20년 동안 고생해서 돈을 모았지만 무슨 소용이 있겠습니까? He worked so hard for 20 years and and became very wealthy, but what what use is that? 사랑하는 마누라, 예쁜 아내들이 있으면 뭐 합니까? And he had uh, beautiful wives and and loved uh, wife that he loved, but what's the use? 이렇게 아들들을 많이 낳아서 어 이렇게 많은 가족을 이뤘지만 그게 무슨 소용이 있겠습니까? And he had many sons and and uh, formed a big family, but for what? 자기를 죽이러 온다는데. Now he's about to die, and he hears that Esau is coming to kill him. 그래서 야곱은 이 야복강에서 홀로 혼자 남았습니다. So he remains at River Jabbok. 그래서는 alone, and then. 천사와 밤새 씨름을 하게 됩니다. And he ends up wrestling with this angel all night long. 이 괴로운 때에 어떤 사람이 찾아와서 자기와 씨름하자고 괴롭히니 얼마나 힘들었겠습니까? How difficult it must have been because he had a, a, a set of problems on his own and somebody comes and wants to wrestle with you. 그래서 이 사람하고 씨름을 하느라고 너무 너무 힘이 다 빠졌습니다. So he, lo- he spent all his energy trying to wrestle with this guy. 그래서 최선을 다해서 계속 씨름을 했습니다. And he gave, but he gave all his efforts in wrestling. 나중에 도저히 안 되겠는지 그 상대편 사람이 야곱의 환도뼈를 확 쳐버렸어요. And it was to a point where it was not going. The wrestle match was not going to come to an end. So the other guy. Hit struck the the uh, hip bone the uh, and dislocated it out of its socket. 이 환도뼈가 the thigh, thigh bone. 고장 나며 망가지면은 제대로 일어설 수 없어요. Now when your thigh is diso- dislocated, you cannot really stand. 우리 윌리엄 장로님이 전에 여기 다쳐갖고 엄청 고생했어요. And I know Elder William uh, had a, a problem with his hip socket too. 그런데 야곱이 끈질기게 이 남자를 붙잡았습니다. And it's very painful and you cannot really stand but Jacob really all the way to the end held on to this man in this wrestle match. 아마도 이 씨름을 하는 동안에 상대편 남자가 그냥 사람이 아니라는 걸 알았을 거예요. And through this during the during this wrestling he probably came to realize that this man was not just a man. 그 사람은 천사로 오신 하나님이에요. He is, uh, he is God who came in the form of angel. 그리고 막 매달렸습니다. And so he held on and held on to him even more. 자기는 아무것도 어차피 혼자 할수 없기 때문에 오로지 이분을 붙들었습니다. And he knew he could not do anything with, by himself anyway, so he just held on to him with all his life. 그러고서는 뭐라 그러냐? 절대 못 갑니다. And what did he say? I will not let you go. 복을 주시기 전엔 절대 못 보냅니다. Unless you bless me, I can I will not let you go. 창세기 32장 26절에 있죠. And this is in Genesis 32 verse 26. 저와 여러분도 모든 인생이 내 힘으로 되는 것이 아니라는 것을 아셔야 되겠죠. And you and I have to come to realize that 
There's nothing we can do with our own strength. 자기를 축복해 달라고 매달리는 야곱에게 그 사람이 말합니다. And this man speaks to Jacob who's telling him or asking him you need to bless me. 창세기 32장 27절에 있습니다. And what he said is written in Genesis 32 verse 27. 그 사람은 뭐라고 이 야곱에게 물어봤습니다. What is what is his response? 내 이름이 무엇이냐? When Jacob is asking you have to bless me and his his response is what is your name? 왜 이름을 물어봤을까요? Why is he asking for his name? 하나님이시라면서요. He's God, isn't he? 하나님이시라면 야곱의 이름을 알고 있을 거예요. If he's God, he should know Jacob's name already, right? 야곱의 이름의 뜻이 뭐였죠? What was Jacob's name uh, significant the meaning of Jacob's name? 발 뒤꿈치를 잡은 자. The one who grabs the heel. 속이는 자. And also a deceiver. 사기꾼. A con like a con artist, right? A, a liar. 결국에 아무리 20년 동안 돈을 많이 벌고 성공했어도 자기 자신을 정확하게 알라는 하나님의 경고와 같았던 거죠. So it was like God's warning to Jacob even though you earned a lot of money and became very wealthy and successful over the past 20 years I want you to be aware of who you are. 야곱은 자기를 고백한 겁니다. So by saying his name Jacob was confessing about himself. 나는 속이는 자, 사기꾼입니다. I am a liar. I am a deceiver. 내가 그런 사람입니다. I am that kind of person. 이렇게 자기를 사기꾼이라고 스스로 말하는 건 너무나 부끄러운 고백이죠. It was a, probably a very shameful confession to make to tell him that I am a deceiver. 이렇게 말한 순간 야곱은 분명히 자기 자신을 But at that moment, Jacob, as he was speaking of his own identity, he probably made a, a, a repentance also. 그동안 내가 잘나서 이만큼 됐다 하는 교만. The pride uh, that told himself, "Oh, I worked so hard. It was me, my my ability that made me so successful." 그리고 어떤 일을 예, 이렇게 완성하기 위해서는 수단과 방법을 가리지 않는 이런 위선. And the hypocrisy of uh, doing things, uh, not uh, not caring about the method and the means in order to achieve his own goal. 거짓말과 속임수로 가득했던 자신의 옛 모습을 분명히 회개했을 것입니다. And he probably repented of his old self uh, that was full of uh, hypocrisy and deception. 그것은 이제까지 야곱의 모든 과거에 잘못된 것을 정리해 주신 시간이었어요. So by asking for his name, he is allowing him to go flashback of uh, back to his uh, his old life full of sin and hypocrisy. 그리고 자기 혼자 남았을 때의 그 모든 과거를 이이 야곱이 생각하게 되었던 거죠. And when it was when he was left alone that he was able to reflect upon his old ways and old life. 그리고 이름을 물어봄으로써 이름을 대답하게 함으로써 이렇게 뭐 이제 회개의 기회를 주신 거죠. And by making him speak his own name, God was allowing him a chance to repent. 그래서 새로운 이름을 이제 주신 겁니다. And because of that repentance. He gave him a new name. 그래서 창세기 32장 28절에 말씀하고 있죠. And so Genesis chapter 32 verse 28 tells us. 네 이름을 이스라엘이라 부를 것이니 이는 내가 하나님과 사람으로 더불어 겨루어 이겼음이니라 그랬어요. For uh, uh, your name shall, shall no longer be Jacob but Israel, for you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. 그 이름을 묻는다는 것은 마치 내 죄가 무엇이냐라고 묻는 것과 같은 거였죠. And so asking for his name is basically asking uh, what is your sin? What are your sins? 왜냐면 아담에게도 uh, 창세기 3장 9절에 말씀하셨죠. Similarly, God spoke to Adam in Genesis chapter 3 verse 9. 죄를 지은 아담에게 내가 어디 있느냐 그랬어요. To Adam who had sinned, God said, "Where are you?" 네 믿음의 상태가 어떠냐라는 물음이죠. He is asking, where is the, where is your faith at? 아담은 정직하게 말하지 않았어요. Adam did not 
자신의 상태를 숨겼고 회개하지 않았습니다. He hid himself from God and he did not repent. 어떻게 보면 아담은 새 이름을 받지 못한 거예요. In other words, Adam was not able to receive a new name. 왜냐면 아담은 그냥 사람이란 뜻이에요. Because Adam is not a name, it's a, just a noun which means man. 자기 역할, 자기의 존재의 목적을 다 해야만이 이름을 받을 수가 있는 건데. We, uh, one is able to receive a name when he can fulfill the purpose of his existence and and his being. 아담은 새 이름을 받지 못한 채로 에덴에서 쫓겨난 게 But Adam did not fulfill his purpose and he did not receive a new name and he was cast out of the garden of Eden. 야곱의 같은 경우를 다시 볼까요? Let us think about Jacob again. 20년 전에는 이 야곱이 자기 이름이 야곱입니다 하지 않았습니다. 20 years ago, Jacob did not confess saying my name is Jacob. 그때가 바로 이 이삭이 이제 마지막으로 장자의 축복을 주려고 할 때였어요. Remember, uh, it was a time when Isaac was uh, about to give the birth, uh, blessing of the birthright. 장자의 축복은 한 사람, 장자만이 받을 수 있는 거죠. Now the, this blessing of the firstborn can only be received by one person. 이 야곱은 이 복을 받기 위해서 장자의 축복을 받기 위해서 자신을 에서처럼 속이고 꾸몄습니다. And Jacob, in order to uh, snatch this birthright of the firstborn, he covered himself and and uh, 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 disguised himself to look like Esau. 이삭이 마침 눈이 잘안 보였어요. And Isaac could not see very well. 그래서 이삭이 야곱을 이렇게 만져보면서 내 이름이 무엇이냐라고 묻습니다. So Esau, uh, Isaac touches Jacob, who is in disguise, and asks him, "What is your name? Who are you?" 저는 받아들 에서입니다. 그랬어요. And he didn't say, "I am Jacob." He said, "I am Esau, your firstborn." 거짓말한 거죠. He, di- he lied. 창세기 27장 18절 19절의 말씀입니다. Genesis 27 verses 18 and 19. 야곱이 아버지에게 나아가서 내 아버지여 하고 부른데 가로대 여기 있나이다 여기 있노라 내 아들아 내가 누구냐 그랬죠? Here it says then he came to his father and said my father and he said here I am and who are you my son he said. 그런데 아, 그때에 에서입니다라고 말했습니다. And Jacob said to his father I am Esau your firstborn. 이렇게 모든 욕심을 차지하기 위해서 속이었던 야곱이었어요. And so this was Jacob who had deceived in order to gain and and seek for his greed. 근데 지금 20년이 지난 이 약복강에선 어떤 일이 일어났습니까? But 20 years later at this river shore of river Jabbok what happened? 하나님이 그 이름을 물었을 때에 야곱이라고 고백을 한 겁니다. When God asked for his name, he was not lying this time. He confessed, "I am Jacob." 자, 이 사건을 통해서 야곱은 이긴 자가 되었습니다. And through this incident, Jacob became an overcomer. 이스라엘의 뜻은 하나님과 겨루어 이기다라는 뜻이에요. Israel means striven with God and men and have prevailed or have overcome. 여기에 보시면 이 3, 창세기 32장 28절에요. And here, here in Genesis 32 verse 27, 하나님과도 싸우고 사람들과도 싸워서 이겼다 그랬어요. It says, "For you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed." 그 동안에는 사람들과만 싸웠었던 거예요. So far, he had only striven with men only. 20년 전에 형하고도 싸워서 이겼었던 거죠. He had striven with his brother Esau and he overcame. 이 바탄 아람에서는 외삼촌 라반하고 겨루어서 매번 이겼던 거죠. In Padan Aram, he uh, strove uh, or he was striving with against his uncle Laban and he prevailed again. 만약 사람들과만 계속 싸워서 이긴 것으로 끝났다면 이 야곱은 굉장히 교만하고 왕 노릇하는 그런 비참한 인생이 되었을 거예요. If he had only striven against and with men and kept on overcoming, this Jacob would have become very arrogant, very proud, and become his own king. 그런데 이 순간에는 하나님과 겨루어 이긴 것을 인정해 주고 계십니다. But God is here recognizing, acknowledging 
that he prevailed against God also. 우리가 하나님과 감히 싸운다는 말이 이해가 되십니까? Does it make sense that we strive against God? 이것은 we fight against God. 야곱의 간절함이 그 야곱의 기도가 하나님의 마음을 움직였다는 얘기예요. It doesn't mean he was fighting against God. It means that Jacob's dire heart and his earnestness uh, was uh, reached the moved the heart of God, stirred up the heart of God. 여러분 기도하는 것도 마치 이게 싸움과 같아요. So our prayer is like a wrestle with God. 너무나 힘든 거죠. It's it's not easy. 중간에 하다가 그만둘 때도 많아요. And at times we quit or 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 give up in the middle. 근데 야곱은 끈질기게 계속 끝장을 본 거예요. But Jacob held on all the way to the end until he saw the end the result. 나를 살려 주십시오. Please save me. 하나님이 나를 살려 주지 않으면 나는 아무것도 할수 없습니다. God, unless you save me, I cannot do anything. 나 이제 돈도 나의 가족들도 이제 다 소용없고 필요가 없습니다. Right now, my money, my family, nothing, everything is useless. 내가 누굴 위해서 이제 살겠습니까? For whom would I live my life from now on? 나는 이제 오로지 하나님 말에서 살 것입니다. God, you're the only one I will live for from now on. 그러니 나를 축복해 주십시오. And so please bless me. 막 이렇게 붙들고 매달리고. And so he was really fervently holding on in prayer. 하나님이 너무나 거기에 두손 들고서는 알았다 알았다 축복해 준 거죠. And so that's why God surrendered saying, "Okay, okay. I get I get it." I, and then he blessed him. 이렇게 야곱은 마침내 하나님이 인정하시는 참 승리자가 되었습니다. And that's how Jacob became a true prevailer or overcomer that God acknowledged. 야곱이 새 이름을 받고 나서 야곱은 축복을 받았죠. And after receiving the new name, Jacob received great blessings. 창세기 32장 29절에 축복하였다 말씀합니다. Genesis 32 verse 29 it says that he uh, uh, that he blessed him. God blessed him. 너무나 야곱은 감사 감격해서 그 장소를 분이엘이라고 이름을 짓습니다. And Jacob was so thankful, so inspired that he named that place Peniel. 30 30절에 나오죠? Verse 30 tells us that, right? 내가 하나님과 대면했습니다라는 하나님의 얼굴이란 뜻이에요. It says, so Jacob named the place Peniel for he said, I have seen God face to face. It, 그리고, Peniel means the face of God. 31절에 보시면 and verse 31 분이엘을 지날 때 해가 돋았다 그랬죠. It says when he crossed over Penuel or Peniel he uh, the the sun, sun rose up upon him. 마치 응답의 증거처럼 하나님이 밝은 새아침을 맞이하게 한 거예요. As if it was like a sign that God is answering his prayers the sun rose up and made everything bright. 밤에 그렇게 씨름하던 이 야곱에게 이제 밝은 아침으로 너의 모든 인생을 비춰 주겠다 하시는 거죠. To Jacob who had been struggling all night long, God brightens up the day and it's a daybreak and he is promising him your days will be bright as this. 하나님은 해 해가 되신다 그랬어요. The Bible tells us that the sun is God. 하나님은 치료하는 광선이라 그랬어요. God is like the sun and he is the healing uh, beam of light. 이제 야곱의 마음 가운데는 태양빛보다도 밝은 그 하나님의 얼굴의 빛이 강하게 솟아오른 거죠. And so this spiritually shows us that in the life of Jacob the great light of God's face had, was shining upon him. 시편 80편 3절에 말씀합니다. Psalm 80 verse 3 tells us. 하나님이여 우리를 돌이키시고 주의 얼굴 빛을 비치사 우리로 구원 얻게 하옵소서. Oh God, restore us and cause your face to shine upon us and we will be saved. 그래서 그 새로운 이름인 이스라엘을 이스라엘 자손들이 지금까지도 기억을 합니다. And so the new name of Jacob is the name that the Israelites still remember. 지금까지 그 이름을 기념을 하는 거예요. And they still commemorated and it became an emblematic name. 창세기 32장 32절이죠. And it's written in Genesis 32 verse 32. 그 사람이 야곱의 환도뼈 큰 힘줄을 친 고로 이스라엘 사람들이 지금까지 환도뼈 큰 힘줄을 먹지 아니하더라. 
Therefore, to this day, the sons of Israel do not eat the sinew of the hip, which is on the socket of the thigh, because he touched the socket of Jacob's thigh in the sinew of the hip. 그래서 이스라엘 백성들은 지금도 이 짐승의 환도뼈 힘줄을 먹지 않는 규례가 있어요. And so there's a rule, a regulation that Israelites still do not eat the sinew of the hip in the socket of 그 an animal. 그 규례를 지키면서 이스라엘, 즉 야곱을 기억하는 거죠. And by keeping that rule, they remember Jacob, their forefather. 정말 기도의 사람이었어. Thinking of him as uh, uh, Jacob is our forefather who was a true man of prayer. 야곱은 하나님을 대면한 사람이었어. Jacob is our forefather is the one that has met God face to face. 그 열심으로 하는 기도가 하나님께 인정되었어. And his fervent prayer was acknowledged and heard by God. 우리도 야곱처럼 이런 신앙을 가져야 되겠구나. And we must also have that kind of faith like our forefather Jacob. 이렇게 사람들에게 있어서 야곱의 새 이름이 기억되고 있습니다. And so Jacob's new name is being remembered even by his descendants generation after generation. 그리고 그 영광스러운 이스라엘이라는 이름은 이제 한 국가의 이름이 되었죠. And that glorious name Israel has become the name for the entire nation. 이제 결론을 맺겠습니다. Now I'd like to draw a conclusion. 우리도 이 승리의 새 이름을 받아야 됩니다. We must also receive this new name of victory. 우리도 이스라엘한 이름을 받아야 됩니다. I believe that we need to also receive this new name Israel. 그러기 위해서는 우리 각자에게도 인생에 큰 전환점이 있어야 되는 거죠. In order for that to take place, there has to be a turning point, big turning point in each of our lives also. 맨날 똑같으면 안 되죠. We cannot just be the same all the way. 나도 이제 새로운 사명을 받아야 되는 거고요. Each of us we need to receive the new task from God. 나도 이제 개인적인 내 가정에서만 쓰이는 이름이 아니라 더 크게 공적인 이름으로 쓰여져야죠. My name should not just remain within my family but it needs to become uh, used for God's public or more uh, official use for his purpose. 이제 우리 지역에서만이 아니라 이제 전 세계적으로도 내 이름이 널리 널리 알려져야 되는 거죠. My name needs to be known not only in my region or my area, but it needs to be known or used by God throughout the world. 여러분 그 막달라 마리아가 예수님께 향유 부은 사건 기억하시잖아요. Do you remember the uh, the incident where Mary Magdalene poured his, her perfume on Jesus? 그 사건으로 예수님은 이제 가는 곳마다 이 여자를 기념하라 그랬잖아요. Jesus said. Uh, wherever the gospel is preached, let what she did, let her name be known. 그러니까 여러분은 이제 귀한 존귀한 성도의 예, 성도의 신분으로서 충분히 여러분은 고귀한 사람입니다. And I believe that each and every one of us is very precious because we are saints. 왜냐, 우리는 그리스도 안에서 모든 악을 이기는 자예요. Because we are people who can overcome all evil in Christ Jesus. 우리는 아브라함의 신앙을 지금 이어가는 그런 사람 언약의 자손들이에요. And we are the descendants, the children that are inheriting and carrying the faith of Abraham. 여러분 이미 그리스도 안에서 십자가에다가 나의 옛 자아를 다못 박은 사람들이에요. And all of you I believe have uh, crucified your old selves on the cross with Jesus. 그리고 이제 영적으로 영적으로 환도뼈가 위골되어서 이제 오직 하나님만 의지하는 사람들이에요. And spiritually our our thigh socket has been dislocated so that we can we can only depend and hold on to God him God only. 여기 계신 저와 여러분이 진정한 참 이스라엘의 이름을 받으신 줄로 믿습니다. So I believe that all of you and me have received the true name Israel. 자, 결론적으로 이러한 이름을 받을 수 있는 새 이름을 받을 수 있는 자는 누구일까요? So as in uh, concluding as a concluding remark in conclusion, who can receive such a new name? 바로 이긴 자가 되어야 되는 거죠. We have to become overcomers. 계시록 2장 17절에 말씀합니다. Revelation 2:17 tells us 이긴 자에게는 내가 새 이름을 주겠다 그랬어요. To him who overcomes, to him I will give a new name. 
계시록 3장 12절에도 말씀합니다. Revelation chapter 3 verse 12 also tells us. 이기는 자에게 나의 새 이름을 기록 주겠다 그랬어요. He says to him who overcomes I will give a new name. 우리는 무엇을 이겨야 될까요? What do we need to overcome? 죄악을 이겨야죠. We need to overcome our sins. 세상의 유혹을 이겨야죠. We need to overcome our the temptations of this world. 나를 괴롭히는 사단을 이겨야죠. We need to overcome Satan. Who's attacking? 제일 큰 적인 나 자신을 이겨야 돼. And I need to overcome the greatest enemy of all. 날마다 나 myself. 자신과 싸워야 되는 거죠. And that means I need to fight against myself day by day. 저는 이번 6월에 있을 헌당식과 임직식이 여러분 인생 각자의 전환점이 되시기를 간절히 소원합니다. I sincerely pray and I pray that this dedication and installation service that is coming. For you in June will become a big turning point in every one of your life. 여러분이 새 이름의 축복을 받으시고 새로운 출발을 하시기를 바랍니다. And may you receive the blessing of the new name and receive the blessing of the new beginning. 네, 말씀과 기도로 승리하여서 여러분 각자의 이름이 하늘 나라 생명책에 기록될 줄로 믿습니다. And I believe that you will gain victory through the word and through prayers, so that your names will be recorded in the book of life in heaven. 기도하겠습니다. Let us pray. 오늘도 우리의 이름을 기억하시고 각자 이름을 불러 주셔서 감사드립니다. Our Father God, we thank you for remembering each and every one of our names and calling our names. 우리를 사랑으로 또 하나님의 놀라운 자비로 이름 불러 주신 줄로 믿습니다. We believe that you have called each of, each of our names with your love and with your eternal compassion and mercy. 우리의 이름을 불러 주실 때 우리도 하나님께 응답하게 하여 주시옵소서. When you call upon our names, help us to respond to your call. 우리에게 주신 귀한 사명을 감당케 하여 주시옵소서. Help us to be able to fulfill the task and mission that you are giving to each and every one of us. 우리의 믿음이 더 높이 올라가게 하여 주시옵소서. May our faith rise higher and higher. 우리가 주의 몸된 교회에 더 헌신하게 하여 주시옵소서. Help us to dedicate and commit ourselves to your body, which is the church. 세상 사람들에게 인정받는 이름이 아니라 하나님께 인정받는 이름 되게 하여 주시옵소서. May our names not be recognized by the world but be by, by God God by you God. 하나님께서 우리를 인정하실 때 모든 일이 형통케 될 줄로 믿습니다. And I believe that when you recognize us and acknowledge us all things will be will prosper. 새 이름 주심에 감사드리며 We thank you for giving us a new name. 예수님의 이름으로 감사기도 올려옵나이다. 아멘. Let's give thanks to God. We sing the songs. Let us respond by seeking for revival of our hearts and ask God to ignite us and give us the perseverance to pursue the new task He has given to us.
Hallelujah. I have a few uh, announcements to share before we end with benediction. Uh, first, uh, let us continue to pray. And uh, now that we have been uh, blessed and uh, clarified through the word tonight, uh, what this dedication and installation service will be. It's a day for our renewal, new beginning, and for us to receive the new name. Amen. And so let us uh, pray f- with that and let us pray especially for the uh, good finishing with the construction. And so I'd like to uh, ask all departments, uh, meaning elders, eldresses, eldresses, deacons, especially those who are being ordained, uh, praise team your departments or your your group that you are in, please do talk to each other and find a way to get together or do a fast or do a time, time, uh, timely prayer. Uh, let us find our ways to really dedicate ourselves and wrestle with God in prayer uh, for, in preparation for our dedication service for the six people that are being ordained and for the uh, finishing of the construction. We need to pray and we need your prayers. So please do, uh, eldresses, talk to each other. Find a way to pray together. Elders, please, we need your prayers. Uh, Departments, ministries, let us uh, please have a a meeting or at least uh, communicate with each other and we need to pray. So I'd like to ask you to do that. And uh, 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 tomorrow morning, I'll be leaving uh, to Shanghai New Covenant Church for their retreat and for their uh, special Bible studies. Please pray that God's blessings, uh, just as we are receiving so much blessings through Evangelist Jasmine, uh, please pray that God's blessings will also go to that church and bless everyone and give a uh, new uh, renewal uh, in that church also. And uh, lastly, 21st of May, after I return on the Lord's Day, after Bible study, we are going to have a meeting, important meeting for uh, several different things, especially for uh, preparation for the dedication service and the installation service. So I'd like to ask all ministry leaders all elders, all eldresses, and all the deacons to uh, be at the place, uh, be at the meeting, especially the six uh, deacons that are being uh, installed as ordained deacons and their spouses, their their wife. Uh, and I like to make it mandatory for those twelve people. At, uh, plus, uh, of course, all the leaders. Uh, thank you, and uh, let us. Uh, Shall we give thanks to God and thanks to Evangelist Jasmine for such great blessings? We have, you have one more, one more Bible study with her. Unless you request a a personal Bible study, but uh, no more chance, no more time slots left. So that one more Bible study is when? What time? Friday, 7.30 p.m. here at Zion Church. So don't miss that chance, and that, uh, that is the night when she's leaving. So she'll be leaving after the Bible study. You can have the privilege to take her for supper <laughs> and to the airport if you want to. Uh, but uh, let us really, really take this chance to receive God's blessings and grace. Amen? Let us all stand and the service with benediction. Father, we thank you so much for your blessings. We thank you for allowing us to be able to see the great blessings that you want to give to Zion Church. Father, allow our bowls, our spiritual vessels to be ready, cleaned to receive your blessings. Father, we thank you so much for the word that you have given us. And with thankful hearts, we lift up our praises, our worship, and our offerings. Father, please receive our hearts and our prayers along with our offerings. And may this offering be used for your glory, for your kingdom, and for your church, for, your, for the fulfillment of your will. 
Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of our Father and inspiration, presence, power, healing, and comforting of the Holy Spirit be upon all of Zion Church members, all those who are worshiping together, their loved ones, their family members, upon their work and business, upon their home, and upon this church from now and forever and ever. Amen. Because the service is over, may God bless you and go with you. I was rich. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time Sin separated The breach was far too wide But from the far side of the chasm You held me in your side So you made a way Across the great divide Left behind Heaven's throne to build it here inside, and there at the cross, you paid the debt I owe, broke my chains, freed my soul for the first time. I place laid inside my tomb of sin you were buried for three days but then you walked